the new watch running, Sam. Well, fine, thanks, Ben. I'll send you over a gold chain for it in the morning. Uh, just a moment. In the early 1960s, the casting process for the TV series Green Acres brought together a perfect mix of comedy and chemistry. The show, focusing on a successful lawyer and his wife who moved from New York City to a rural country farm, needed actors who could embody the humor and heart of the story. The main character, Oliver Wendell Douglas, was played by Eddie Albert. With his extensive background in film, television, and theater, Albert was a natural choice for the role of the sophisticated lawyer turned farmer. His comedic timing and ability to connect with audiences made him an ideal fit for the part. Eva Gabor, a Hungarian-born actress, was cast as Lisa Douglas, Oliver's socialite wife who adapts to country life with enthusiasm and naivety. Gabor's charm and comedic skills, along with her previous experience in the entertainment industry, made her an excellent choice for the role. The chemistry between Albert and Gabor was evident from their first meeting, and it translated beautifully onto the screen. Their contrasting personalities and comedic styles created a dynamic that made Green Acres a beloved classic. Supporting characters were also carefully chosen to enhance the show's comedic elements. Tom Lester, a relatively unknown actor at the time, was cast as Ev Dawson, the Douglases' lovable and somewhat simple-minded farmhand. Lester's ability to play off the main characters and his genuine likability made him a perfect addition to the cast. Pat Buttram, an experienced character actor, joined the cast as Mr. Haney, the shady and unscrupulous local farm supplier. Buttram's comedic delivery and ability to create a memorable and entertaining character made him a standout in the series. The casting process for Green Acres was a careful and deliberate one, with each actor chosen for their unique talents and abilities. The result was a memorable an entertaining show that has stood the test of time. Farm. Uh, did she say who dyes her hair? I didn't ask her. All I know is that she knows a lot about... The directorial vision behind the 1965 TV series Green Acres was shaped by Richard L. Bear, who brought a unique approach to the show. Bear's creative influences included classic American humor, rural life, and the contrast between city and country living. His style was characterized by a blend of situational comedy and visual gags with a focus on the absurdity of everyday life. Bear's approach to directing Green Acres was highly collaborative. He worked closely with the cast and crew to ensure that every aspect of the show, from the acting to the set design, supported his vision. Bear was known for his attention to detail, often spending hours perfecting a single shot or joke. One of Bear's most notable contributions to Green Acres was his use of wide-angle lenses, which gave the show its distinctive look. This technique allowed Bear to capture the expanse of rural settings and exaggerate the size of the characters, adding to the show's comedic effect. Bear's vision for Green Acres was also influenced by his background in animation. He had previously worked on the animated series Looney Tunes and brought a similar sense of humor and visual style to Green Acres. Bear's use of sight gag, physical comedy, and exaggerated facial expressions were all reminiscent of classic animation. In addition to his work on Green Acres, Bear was also known for his work on other TV shows and films, including The Twilight Zone and The Andy Griffith Show. His contributions to the world of television and film have left a lasting impact, and his unique directorial style continues to be celebrated and studied today. I haven't got that kind of money. In fact, nobody in the whole valley has that kind of money. He has. If I... Green Acres is a classic 1965 TV series that follows the life of Oliver Wendell Douglas, a successful New York lawyer who moves with his glamorous wife, Lisa, to the rural town of Hooterville. The show is filled with humor, absurdity, and a unique blend of social commentary. Perhaps one of the most interesting facts about Green Acres is that it was initially canceled due to low ratings, but fan outcry and protests led to its eventual return. This just goes to show how much people loved and cherished this show. Did you know that the show's theme song, Green Acres, was a hit single in its own right, reaching number one on the country charts? The catchy tune is still remembered and sung today, a testament to the show's enduring popularity. Green Acres has also had a significant impact on popular culture. The show's portrayal of rural life and its satirical take on American society have inspired countless other TV shows and movies. Now, we'd love to hear from you. 
Do you have a personal story of how Green Acres has inspired or impacted your life? Or perhaps a cherished memory or experience related to the show? Share your stories and memories in the comments below. And stay tuned for more fascinating facts about this beloved TV series. This is Douglas. Oh? Then uh, who is this pretty little thing? <laughs> The production of the 1965 TV series, Green Acres, took place primarily in Hollywood with both indoor and outdoor sets. The show's main location was a fictional farm in Hooterville, which was created on the back lot of the CBS Studio Center. The set design team, led by art director E. Preston Ames, constructed the farmhouse, barn, and other buildings, as well as the surrounding landscape, to resemble the Midwest. The show's filming also took place in various locations around California, including the town of Thousand Oaks, which doubled as Hooterville. The production team had to face logistical challenges, such as transporting cast and crew to remote locations and coordinating with local authorities for filming permits. One innovative technique employed during the production of Green Acres was the use of the then new electronic news gathering technology. This allowed the production team to shoot on location using portable video cameras, which provided a more realistic and dynamic look to the show. The show's set design was also notable for its use of force perspective, a technique that made the sets appear larger and more spacious than they actually were. This was achieved by building the sets at a slight angle and using smaller props and furniture in the background. The production of Green Acres was a complex process requiring careful planning and coordination Despite the logistical challenges and innovative techniques employed, the show became a beloved classic, known for its humor, memorable characters, and unique set design. They count with the Public Utilities Commission. Oh, well, uh, eight subscribers too few, huh? <laughs> Green Acres is a classic television show that has stood the test of time, despite being known for its goofy, corny, and sometimes ridiculous humor. The show, which first aired in 1965, stars Eva Gabor, and Eddie Albert as a wealthy couple who moved from New York City to a rural farm in the fictional town of Hooterville. One of the standout aspects of Green Acres is the strong supporting cast, which includes Tom Lester as the lovable and simple-minded farmhand, Eb. The scripts, when compared to contemporary sitcoms, are inventive and fairly sparky, with a comedy of manners that is both amiable and entertaining. However, the show is not without its flaws. One of the most notable is the use of a laugh track, which can be grating and detract from the overall comedic experience. The laugh track, which was common in sitcoms of the era, is particularly noticeable in Green Acres and can slow down the comedy, making it feel forced and unnatural. Despite this, Green Acres remains a beloved and enduring show with a loyal fan base that continues to appreciate its unique blend of humor and charm. The show's simplicity and lack of political agenda make it a refreshing escape from the more complex and heavy-handed sitcoms of today. In conclusion, Green Acres is a classic sitcom that is worth checking out, despite its flaws. The strong cast, inventive scripts, and charming humor make it a standout in the world of television and a testament to the power of simple yet effective comedy. What's going on here? <laughs> The creation of the Green Acres musical score and soundtrack was a collaboration between composers Vic Mizzy and Herschel Burt Gilbert. The music they crafted perfectly complemented the narrative and emotional tone of the 1965 TV series. Vic Mizzy, known for his work on shows like The Addams Family, composed the iconic theme song for Green Acres. The catchy tune, with lyrics sung by Mizzy himself, introduced the show's premise and set the stage for its comedic tone. Herschel Burt Gilbert, an experienced film and television composer, created the background score. His music accentuated the humor and the fish-out-of-water situation of Oliver Wendell Douglas, played by Eddie Albert, and his wife Lisa, portrayed by Eva Gabor. The score featured various musical styles, from country to classical, reflecting the contrasting backgrounds of the main characters. For instance, when Oliver, a successful lawyer from New York, moves to the countryside, the score incorporates classical music elements to highlight his urban sophistication. On the other hand, Lisa's love for her new rural life is portrayed through lively country and folk music. Composers and musicians work together to ensure the music aligned with the storyline and character development. For example, when Lisa feels homesick, the soundtrack includes a more melancholic tune 
emphasizing her emotional state. In an interview, Vic Mizzy stated, the music needed to be a character itself, enhancing the humor and the culture clash at the heart of Green Acres. Herschel Burke Gilbert added, we wanted to create a soundtrack that was as memorable and fun as the show itself. The Green Acres soundtrack remains a beloved part of the series, showcasing the talent and hard work of all those involved in its creation. Boat. There's a rope in the barn. Oliver! In the popular 1960s television series, Green Acres, the Douglas family kept a Jersey cow named Eleanor, a rooster called Bertram, and a hen known as Alice at their barn. The cunning Mr. Haney, the only recurring character without a wife visible on screen, was part of the lively Hooterville community, where most farmers' wives were members of the Every Other Wednesday Afternoon Club. Interestingly, Eva Gobor wasn't the first choice to play Lisa. The original picks were Marsha Hunt and Janet Blair. These behind-the-scenes details add depth to the well-known series. Ab! One of the most iconic scenes in Green Acres is the opening credit sequence, which features the show's theme song and a montage of shots that introduce the main characters in the setting. The upbeat theme song, composed by Vic Mizzy, immediately sets the tone for the show's humor and absurdity. The opening credits also showcase the impressive comic timing of the two leads, Eddie Albert and Eva Gobor, as they are seen interacting with farm animals and each other in a series of hilarious vignettes. The show's cinematography is also worth noting, as it often employs unusual camera angles and quick cuts to enhance the comedic effect of a scene. For example, in an episode where Oliver tries to milk a cow, the camera is positioned below the cow's belly, making it seem as though Oliver is dwarfed by the animal's massive udder. This visual gag is a perfect example of the show's ability to find humor in the mundane and elevate it to absurd heights. The performances of the cast are another key element of the show's success. Eddie Albert, in particular, excels as the fish out of water Oliver Wendell Douglas, bringing a sense of earnestness and determination to the character that makes him endearing to audiences. Eva Gabor, as the glamorous and materialistic Lisa Douglas, is equally impressive, delivering her lines with a perfect blend of humor and charm. One of the most memorable episodes of the show is Oliver Buys a Network, in which Oliver becomes the owner of a failing television network and attempts to produce highbrow programming. The episode is a satire of the television industry and features a number of memorable scenes, including a hilarious sequence in which Lisa tries to host a cooking show and ends up burning down the kitchen. According to the show's creator, Jay Somers, the goal of Green Acres was to create a show that was funny, but not mean-spirited. This ethos is evident in every episode, as the show's humor is always grounded in the characters and their situations, rather than at their expense. The impact of Green Acres on audiences has been significant, with the show developing a devoted following that has endured for decades. The show's blend of humor, absurdity, and satire has inspired countless other television shows and films, and its influence can still be seen in popular culture today. As Eddie Albert himself once said, Green Acres was a show that made people laugh and feel good, and that's a legacy I'm proud to be a part of. Love it. What are we gonna do? We gotta find us a place to hole up in until the heat's off. I know a show. In the early episodes of Green Acres, Ed, played by Hank Patterson, had a crush on Betty Jo Bradley from Petticoat Junction. As the show progressed, he dated Lorelei and eventually became involved with Darlene Wheeler, whom he almost married. Patterson, who was in his late 70s and almost completely deaf when the show began, required a unique approach to keep him on set. A dialogue coach would tap him on the leg with a yardstick to signal when it was his turn to speak. The cast of Green Acres had remarkable longevity. Pat Buttram, who played Mr. Haney, lived to be 78, while Eva Gabor, who played Lisa Douglas, lived to be 76. Alvy Moore, who played County Agent Hank Kimball, lived to be 75. Frank Cady, who played Sam Drucker, lived to be 96. Sid Melton, who played Alf Monroe, lived to be 94. And Mary Grace Canfield, who played Ralph Monroe, lived to be 89. Hank Patterson, the oldest cast member, lived to be 86. The youngest cast member, Tom Lester, who played Ed Dawson, lived to be 81 when he passed away in 2020. Barbara Pepper, who played Doris Ziffel, passed away in 1969 at the age of 54. 
Director Richard L. Baer, who directed almost all of the episodes, lived to be 101 when he passed away in 2015. Yell all the time. I don't yell all the time. You're more fun than my father. Oh? Green Acres, a 1965 TV series, made a significant cultural and social impact through its humor and satire. The show, starring Eddie Albert and Eva Gabor, resonated with audiences by poking fun at the American dream and rural life. It depicted the fish-out-of-water story of a high-society woman adjusting to farm life, which many found entertaining and relatable. Green Acres influenced pop culture by popularizing the city slicker versus country bumpkin trope and inspiring various parodies and homages in later shows and movies. The series also contributed to discussions on relevant social themes, such as the changing role of women in society. Eva Gabor's character, Lisa Douglas, was a strong, independent woman who, despite her initial struggles, embraced her new life on the farm and made her own decisions. Moreover, Green Acres was a commentary on consumerism and materialism as the main characters often found themselves overwhelmed by their new, simple lifestyle. This critique of American values resonated with audiences, particularly during a time of significant cultural change in the 1960s. In summary, Green Acres made a lasting impact on American culture and society through its humor, satire, and commentary on relevant social themes. The show's portrayal of the city versus country dynamic, as well as its depiction of a strong, independent female character, made it a significant and influential part of 1960s pop culture. Now, if you want anything else, write a note, put it in a bottle, and float it into the kitchen! <laughs> In the second episode of Green Acres, Lyle Talbot appeared as Horace Bennett, a potential buyer of the Douglas, New York penthouse. Talbot returned in later seasons as the Hooterville area state representative and the governor of the state named Governor Carstairs. The state is never explicitly named in the series, but it is heavily implied to be California, with the governor being a retired actor, much like the then current governor of California, Ronald Reagan. Eddie Albert, who played Oliver Wendell Douglas on the show, passed away in 2005. At his funeral, three of his Green Acres co-stars were in attendance, although Tom Lester, who played Eb Dawson, was not. Albert had once stated that Lester was his closest and best friend. Throughout the series, Mr. Haney's first name is given as Eustace, but in one episode, he is called Charlton by his cousin. This inconsistency is one of the many quirks of the beloved show. Hundred and there's a fifty. Where did you get the money? From my auction. Green Acres, a 1965 TV series, received mixed reviews from critics when it first aired. Some praised its humor and unique take on the rural lifestyle, while others found it absurd and unfunny. Eddie Albert and Eva Gabor, who played the lead roles, were generally well received for their comedic performances. The show's audience reactions were more positive. It developed a loyal fan base, with viewers appreciating the satire and the charming portrayal of country life. The show's theme song, Green Acres, became popular and is still recognized today. In terms of awards, Green Acres was nominated for several Primetime Emmy Awards, including Outstanding Comedy Series, an outstanding continued performance by an actress in a leading role in a comedy series for Eva Gabor. These nominations recognize the show's quality and the cast's acting abilities. Receiving these nominations and positive audience reactions is significant for those involved in the film. It signifies that their work is appreciated and has made a mark in the television industry. It can also lead to further opportunities and recognition for the cast and crew. However, it's important to note that critical reception doesn't always align with audience reactions as seen with Green Acres. Despite the mixed reviews, the show's enduring popularity and fan base are a testament to its appeal and quality. <laughs> well, how do you expect to receive a refund on a tax you never paid? Mister. Eddie Albert and Eva Gabor, the stars of Green Acres, were not just co-workers but close friends during the show's run. Their on-screen chemistry was authentic, often demonstrated by their frequent physical contact. When Gabor passed away in 1995, Albert was deeply affected, and upon his own death, he was buried near her in Westwood Village Memorial Park Cemetery. Sid Melton was a semi-regular on Green Acres, portraying Alf Monroe, one half of a bungling carpenter duo. His on-screen sister, Ralph, was played by Mary Grace Canfield. 
Eva Gabor, who played Oliver Wendell Douglas's wife on Green Acres, was 13 years younger than her co-star, Eddie Albert. Despite their age difference, their friendship and on-screen partnership were successful. Kid, sit down. No thanks, I'm not hungry. Sit down. Uh, you better do what they... Eva Gabor, known for her elegant character on Green Acres, had a strong Hungarian accent. To ensure that her character's lines were understandable, the script's supervisor, Gladys Hiddenfeld, would rewrite them in a way that preserved the humor while making the dialogue clearer for audiences. Eddie Albert, who played Oliver Wendell Douglas, was an experienced and dedicated actor. He would often arrive early on set to practice his lines and work with the prop department to ensure his character's interactions with tools and farm equipment appeared authentic. The show's creators, Jay Sandridge and Paul Henning, aimed to create a unique blend of humor and satire. They drew inspiration from the popular 1950s and 1960s trend of city dwellers moving to the countryside. The series was initially intended to be a parody of the rural lifestyle but it evolved into a heartfelt and entertaining show. Pat Butram, who played Mr. Haney, was a seasoned character actor. He had a long history of working in westerns and brought his natural charm and wit to the role. Butram would often improvise lines and ad-lib scenes, contributing to the show's comedic success. The show's theme song, Green Acres, was performed by Eva Gabor and Vic Mizzy, the series' musical director. Mizzy also composed the show's memorable score, which added to the lighthearted and whimsical atmosphere of the series. Despite the show's success, it faced cancellation rumors throughout its six-season run. Fans rallied behind the series, sending letters and postcards to CBS to express their support. Ultimately, the dedication of Green Acres fan base helped secure its place on the air. Green Acres set designed by Hollywood veteran E. Preston Ames, was a detailed and accurate representation of a Midwestern farm. The set included a functioning barn, a windmill, and a farmhouse, all built on a studio backlot. The set's design contributed to the show's distinctive visual style and helped establish its unique tone. The show's cast and crew formed close bonds during the production. They would often gather for meals and social events, creating a warm and welcoming atmosphere on set. This sense of camaraderie was evident in the show's final episode, which featured a touching farewell scene for the characters. In conclusion, Green Acres was a groundbreaking and beloved television series that captured the hearts of audiences with its unique blend of humor, satire, and heartfelt performances. The show's behind-the-scenes anecdotes offer a fascinating glimpse into the experiences of the cast and crew, revealing the dedication, creativity, and camaraderie that made Green Acres a true classic. Well, for somebody who said he didn't want to be, I heard he made the motion to kick Joe out, and he... The character Lisa's backstory in the 1965 TV series Green Acres is based on Eva Gabor's own life. Eva Gabor, who played Lisa, was born in Hungary to a veteran of World War I and grew up in Budapest. Mary Grace Canfield, known for her role as Ralph Monroe, appeared in about 40 episodes of the show. Additionally, Eva Gabor and Eddie Albert worked together again in a 1983 Broadway production. That wasn't very nice. Please, will you let me read? All right. Green Acres, a 1965 TV series, holds a unique place in film history. It was part of the popular trend of rural comedies in the 60s, but its innovative storytelling and character development set it apart. The show, starring Eddie Albert and Eva Gabor, presented a city couple's humorous adjustment to country life, using satire and slapstick humor. Green Acres' impact on future filmmaking is evident in its influence on the situational comedy genre. Its boldness in challenging traditional gender roles and stereotypes was ahead of its time and has been echoed in many modern TV shows and movies. The series also demonstrated the potential of rural settings as a backdrop for comedy, paving the way for shows like The Beverly Hillbillies and Hee Haw, the series inspired several subsequent works. For instance, the 1990 film Pure Country drew inspiration from Green Acres' Country City Contrast. The series also influenced animated shows like King of the Hill and The Simpsons, which often used similar humor and satire to explore small town life. In addition, Green Acres has had a lasting impact on popular culture. Its theme song, Green Acres, became a standard for TV theme songs and is still hummed today. The series also popularized the idea of the city slicker adjusting to rural life 
a theme that has been revisited in numerous films and TV shows. In conclusion, Green Acres, with its innovative storytelling and groundbreaking themes, has left a significant mark on film history and continues to influence modern filmmaking and popular culture. This time I'm going to teach you a lesson. I want the five dollars now. Well, I haven't. Green Acres, a popular television series from the mid-1960s, is known for its unique portrayal of rural life. Although there is speculation that Hooterville, the show's setting, is in California, there are indications suggesting it could be a composite of several other states. In one episode, Lisa travels west in a balloon and lands in Denver, which would not be possible if she started in California. The series was a victim of CBS Rural Purge in the early 1970s, along with other shows like The Beverly Hillbillies and Petticoat Junction. Despite their popularity and high ratings, these shows were canceled to make way for more urban and suburban targeted programs. The decision was based on demographic analysis, indicating that these shows appealed only to rural audiences and older people. Despite the show's end, Eddie Albert, who played Oliver Wendell Douglas, remained good friends with Tom Lester, who played Eb Dawson, during and after the show. Their friendship is a testament to the camaraderie built during the show's run. Square eggs. <laughs> Mr. Douglas, that's impossible. Well, it's not impossible. Yes, it is impossible. <laughs> Eddie Albert, who starred in Green Acres, was buried near his co-star Eva Gabor in Westwood Memorial, Los Angeles. He attended her funeral when she passed away in 1995. Interestingly, Eleanor Audley, who played his mother in the show, was only five months older than Albert. This fact adds a layer of irony to their on-screen mother-son relationship. Your cultural report, have you sighted the target? The target? The gun emplacement. Oh yes, I see it right dead ahead. Bomb it. In the show Green Acres, which began airing in 1965, Eddie Albert had a 10% ownership stake as part of his contract. He took over the role after Don Imichi declined it, and Marsha Hunt and Janet Blair had auditioned with him before Eva Gabor was cast. Fran Ryan became Doris Ziffel in the fifth season, replacing Barbara Pepper. Among the main actors, Hank Patterson was the oldest at 77, while Eddie Albert was 59. Pat Buttram, Frank Cady, Barbara Pepper, Eva Gabor, Alvy Moore, and Sid Melton were all in their 40s or 50s. Mary Grace Canfield was 41, and Tom Lester was the youngest at 27. Most of the cast members were over 40 when the show started. Can't afford a whack, a, a, a haircut. Business is terrible, that's why I'm having this sale. Everybody in town. Eddie Albert, known for his role in Green Acres as a farm owner, made a significant impact in real life by establishing a non-profit organization. This organization provided inner city children with the unique opportunity to work together on a farm in the countryside for a week. The exact location of Hooterville, the setting of Green Acres was never specified. However, based on the distance to Chicago and other clues, it is likely that the show takes place in Missouri. Throughout the series, Oliver, played by Albert, drove five gold convertibles. The first three were Lincoln Continentals, and the last two were Mercury Marquis, as Lincoln had stopped producing convertibles. In summary, Eddie Albert's character in Green Acres owned a farm, and in real life, he established a non-profit organization for inner-city children. The show's setting is likely in Missouri, and Oliver drove five gold convertibles during the series' run. Mr. Douglas! What? You'd better get out of town. Why? They're gonna tar and feather you for getting that tax refund. Darling, I'm so... In the first season of Green Acres, the opening song ended with the cast singing Green Acres, Here We Come. However, this was changed in subsequent seasons to Green Acres, We Are There. The show's director, Richard L. Bear, was a comedy veteran who had previously worked on the Joe McDoak series of theatrical shorts. Green Acres was adapted from the 1950 radio show Granby's Green Acres, which aired as a summer replacement for Lucille Ball's My Favorite Husband. The radio show starred Gail Gordon and B. Benaderet, who later went on to star in Petticoat Junction. Benaderet made guest appearances in six first season episodes of Green Acres, reprising her role from the radio show. It's worth noting that almost all the episodes of Green Acres were directed by Richard L. Bear, and the show was adapted from a radio show called Granby's Green Acres. The opening song's lyrics were changed after the first season, and B. Benaderet made guest appearances in the show's early episodes. How about credit cards? <laughs> Young man, are you making fun of the dignity of this court? Uh, no, Your Honor. He... In the television series Green Acres, 
The neighboring towns of Hooterville include Pixley, Crabwell Corners, and Stankwell Falls. The show features several recurring gags, such as Lisa's Hungarian accent leading to mispronunciations of words like Hootersville and Electrizicals. Additionally, in one episode, Mr. Haney's Basset Hound, Cynthia, had a crush on Arnold the Pig, but she only appeared in that single episode. These quirky and humorous elements contribute to the show's appeal and help create a unique and entertaining viewing experience. Green Acres, a 1960s television series, is part of a shared fictional universe with the Beverly Hillbillies and Petticoat Junction. Characters from these shows often made appearances in Green Acres and vice versa. Pat Butram, known for his role in Green Acres, later co-starred with Eva Gabor in Disney's The Rescuers. Butram's character, Mr. Haney, was a cunning and tricky salesman, while Gabor played the role of a glamorous socialite. The writers of Green Acres often played a trick on Eddie Albert, who played the role of Oliver Wendell Douglas. They would give him a bogus script, and his reactions of confusion were genuine. Albert's character was a lawyer who moved to the country to become a farmer, and his confusion added to the humor of the show. Mr. Douglas, open up! Mr. Ziffel, I wonder what's... In the 1965 sitcom Green Acres, Eddie Albert practiced what he preached by teaching his co-star, Tom Lester, about healthy eating. Lisa Douglas, one of the show's main characters, had a maiden name of Grainites, which she made sure to spell out as G-R-A-N with a yitz at the end. The show is notable for being the first sitcom where the theme song lyrics were sung by the lead actors themselves, with the music based on the well-known shave and a haircut riff. These interesting details add depth to the beloved series, enhancing the viewing experience for its older audience. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm afraid we don't have any reservation for a Douglas. Tom Lester, the actor who played Eb Dawson on Green Acres, had a rural upbringing in Mississippi. He learned farming skills there, such as growing and shucking corn, which he later brought to his character on the show. Arnold, the Ziffel's pig, was played by a different pig in each season of the series. The pigs varied in color, size, and sex, although the character of Arnold was always referred to as male. The so's nipples were visible in many shots, but the producers maintained a male gender reference. Unlike the hillbilly characters in the Beverly Hillbillies, who stuck to their old clothes, Oliver and Lisa from Green Acres wore city attire. Oliver always wore business suits and ties, even when working on the farm, while Lisa donned glamorous dresses and jewelry in every scene. These fashion choices added to the show's comedic effect and highlighted the characters' backgrounds. Uh, is this Mr. Carson? It ain't Vincent Lope. In the 1965 TV series Green Acres, Barbara Pepper played the role of Doris Ziffel, the wife of the Douglas neighboring farmer, Fred Ziffel. Frank Cady, on the other hand, is memorable for portraying the same character, Sam Drucker, in three different television series, including Green Acres, the show featured various animals during its early seasons, such as pets and farm animals, which disappeared in later shows. For instance, Lisa Douglas had a pet terrier named Mignon, who appeared in 11 episodes, but was never seen or mentioned after its last appearance in season 3. Similarly, Eb Dawson's pet tortoise, Elois, was only seen in one episode. The farm's chickens, including Alice, Bertram, Henrietta, and Emily, were bought from Mr. Haney and appeared only in early season episodes. However, the dairy cow, Eleanor, remained throughout all six seasons, always providing milk. The chicken's disappearance was never explained, but it was noticeable that Lisa's fresh eggs were replaced with store-bought ones in later episodes. In summary, Green Acres had a diverse range of animal characters that added to the show's charm. While some animals disappeared without explanation, others remained throughout the series, contributing to the show's enduring appeal. I didn't well, I can't stand here talking to you. Bye. Oh, oh no, no, what? no, 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 wait. Where are you going? I got to... Eddie Albert's acting career included several roles that showcased his character's passion for farming. In the Tea House of the August Moon, he played an army psychiatrist who was fascinated by fertilizer, seeds, and farm equipment. Later, in The Outer Limits' Cry of Silence, he portrayed a man who decided to leave the city with his wife and buy a farm, only to be threatened by malevolent forces. Eva Gabor is best remembered for her role as Lisa Douglas, the socialite turned farm wife in Green Acres. Her portrayal of the character became highly popular and is still recognized today. 
Eddie Albert's friendship with producer and creator Paul Henning helped him secure the role of Oliver Wendell Douglas in Green Acres. Albert's previous acting experiences had prepared him well for the role, and he brought a unique charm to the character. In summary, Eddie Albert's earlier acting roles had prepared him for his eventual role in Green Acres, while Eva Gabor's starring role as Lisa Douglas made her a household name. Eddie Albert's connection to producer and creator Paul Henning also played a significant role in his casting. If it weren't for you, Arnold wouldn't be going to Hawaii tomorrow. I hope he has a good time. Uh, do you want to go? Eddie Albert's character, Oliver Wendell Douglas, in the television series Green Acres, was named as a nod to two Supreme Court Associate Justices, Oliver Wendell Holmes and William O. Douglas. In contrast to his character, Albert served in the U.S. Navy during World War II, but unlike Oliver, he was stationed in the Pacific Theater. The title of the show has its roots in the world of Hollywood. Green Acres was the name of Harold Lloyd's home, which was one of the largest homes in Beverly Hills. The series was inspired by this name, as well as the earlier radio show. In the series, Oliver Wendell Douglas is a former Army Air Corps pilot who met his wife Lisa after his plane was shot down over Hungary during World War II. The show never explicitly mentions Albert's military service, but his character's background is reminiscent of his own experiences, albeit in a different theater of war. Overall, Green Acres is a show that combines humor and satire with elements of real-life experiences, all wrapped up in a title that pays homage to Hollywood's past. <laughs> In the television series Green Acres, the governor of the unnamed state where Hooterville is located is portrayed by actor Lyle Talbot. Talbot's character is also named Lyle Talbot, making it easy for viewers to identify him. Pat Buttram, who plays Mr. Haney in the show, based his character on Tom Parker, also known as Colonel Tom Parker, who is Elvis Presley's manager. Buttram had met Parker a decade or so earlier when Parker worked as a carnival barker. Actress Barbara Pepper, who played Doris Ziffel in the series, developed health issues that became severe by 1969. She was forced to leave the show, and Fran Ryan took over the role for the remainder of the series. In summary, Green Acres features Lyle Talbot as the governor of Hooterville State, with Pat Buttram's character based on Elvis Presley's manager. Barbara Pepper's health issues led to Fran Ryan taking over the role of Doris Ziffel. Would you mind moving back? What? I said, would you mind moving? The red, open cab truck driven by Hank Kimball and Green Acres was a Ford Bronco Roadster, updated annually throughout the series. The show also promoted other CBS series, such as The Dick Van Dyke Show and Gomer Pyle Loves Me, with characters expressing their desire to watch them. Interestingly, the characters even mentioned the Beverly Hillbillies, which existed in the same TV universe. A false rumor once circulated that the cast had a luau on the final day of filming and ate Arnold the Piggy, but this was debunked years later by Tom Lester, who admitted to making up the story. Long time. Well, looks better and better. <laughs> what kind of a pool is this? Well, the 1965 television series Green Acres was sponsored by General Foods, known for products like Maxwell House Coffee and Post Cereals. A notable addition during the final season was the Douglases' pet duck, Drobny, who was the son of a duck that had assisted Lisa during World War II. A notable character on the show was Ralph Munro, played by Mary Grace Canfield. The creator of Green Acres, Jay Somers, frequently engaged in disputes with network executives over Ralph's role as a female construction worker. The executives were concerned that the public, particularly men, might find it hard to believe that a woman could perform manual labor. Ralph's brother, Alf Monroe, also acknowledges this skepticism in one of the episodes, revealing that he refers to himself and his sister as the Monroe brothers and calls Ralph Ralph to avoid confusion. Ralph's given name is never revealed in the show, and she makes several attempts to be more feminine, all of which fail. In one episode, she even marries the scatterbrain county agent Hank Kimball, but the marriage is quickly annulled when Hank expresses his reluctance to be associated with a woman who has a man's name. These plot lines reflect the societal attitudes towards gender roles during the time the show was produced. To me, it isn't. It's cabbage soup. <laughs> if Green Acres, the beloved 1965 TV series, brought laughter to your home and memories you cherish, we'd love to hear from you. Share your favorite moments. 
How this show impacted your perspective on cinema or how it influenced your life. Did you enjoy the humor, the characters, or the unique storyline? How did Green Acres stand out among other shows of its time? By engaging with this post, liking, sharing, and subscribing, you'll help create a vibrant community of cinema enthusiasts. Let's celebrate this classic series together and keep its legacy alive for future generations to enjoy. We look forward to hearing your stories and insights about Green Acres. Let's reminisce and explore the influence of this timeless show. No, no, no. Abby's still looking for it. Well, uh, what is it?